three door glass reach in cooler that they're using for something that's in a, their personal garage. So we've got a condenser that was a little dirty. I brushed it off and our problem right now is our evaporator is frozen up. So let's go ahead and get this thing freaking uh, taken apart so we can get that melted and we'll find out if it's low on charge or, or what's going on. I'm not seeing the back with these little holes in it. So they've been using it for flowers and with it being black it almost looks like it was professionally painted or was ordered that way. Usually it's white. So let's see if we can get this thing off, knocked off there and it's uh, holding it up from the rear. This is more of a pain in the butt. Looks like we got two evaporators on this thing. All right, so that let down on me. We're gonna blow those lines out too. You can tell those have been growing stuff there for a while. This is kind of sticking with that tar stuff I think that they put in here. Yeah, like it's not even draining out because it's plugged up. Nice. And missing the bowl. There we go. bracket here in the middle. I gotta get you out of there. One of the first things I noticed is the evaporator over there is frozen. Which that could be just low on charge and happened to have enough to freeze that one and this one didn't have enough or maybe it was good enough. But here's our tube for our thermostat. It goes right in here and that's how it knows to defrost. So we're gonna have to make sure we wire tie or wire that thing up there so that it's in the coil. Uh, Cause if it's not, then it's not gonna naturally defrost itself. So unfortunately we're gonna have to run some, uh, some heat on that thing over there and get that melted. And then we'll start finding out whether or not this has a leak. We're gonna blow those lines out too. And this is something you can't do with today's current R290 stuff, but at least this is not R290. So we're just melting this thing out. This will work, or we could use uh, water, which we're going to try the torch first just to see if it makes it uh, melt pretty quick. And if not, we'll, we'll get the water out, but it's going to make a mess no matter what. more water out of it than what I thought it would. Got pretty dirty coil there. Let's see what do with regular light. There we go. You can see it's kind of nasty there. A little more dirt on the side of the cooler, I guess. Get that out of there. Yeah, last thing you want is to be searching for a leak and then that drips down in your freaking nozzle. That sucks. Especially depending on what detector you got. So I'm gonna screw them up, others it just plugs up the tip. Let's see if we can't blow these out with that thing. If not, we'll go grab the CO2 cartridge. So we scanned it over and did not pick up anything. I even scanned it with the H10, didn't pick up anything. Um, I'm gonna steal this one out from here, see if it's any better, but man, it does not look like it. Look at that, that thing is freaking snapped and broke there and there. Now and over there is broke too. I mean, it only has one break on it. But I did steal the little hooks. These little hooks will come in handy to hold that up here. Because I really would like to try to keep it in the same position as what the factory originally put it. Proper defrosting of the coil. Um, you can see here on this one right, right there. That's from water getting in there and breaking. So um, water will get in there, freeze, and then break that pipe. But that goes right in there. Um, I've pulled this in and out a couple times. It's kind of corroded. Chances are the thermostat's probably bad. Um, if we don't have a refrigerant issue, then it's going to be a thermostat sticking. 
So um, I'm going to put this together and see if what the uh, refrigerant charge looks like. Okay, that's not gonna work very good. I really need my other hands. Basically the way this works is it hooks her on the back and it will pop right around it. So we hooked it back here, bring it forward, and it holds it right in there like that. You can also do it with some wire. That'll work too. So I hook it to the back, bring it forward, and in like that. So we put three of them in there. I believe it only had two originally, which is kind of less than what I feel as though it needs. So we've got three in there now. Heck, we don't even know. Maybe the fans ain't running. I mean, this thing was unplugged when I got here. Save ourselves a potential callback earlier. Get all this crap out of here. That's just asking for a plug drain. If we got it back into place. Fan spins. And of course that one doesn't. I just found out you can see this one's bent down a lot lower. And that's a pretty strong freaking blade. I don't think I did that when I took it down. So we're gonna pop that out of there and see if we can straighten it up a little bit. A lot of times you can kind of gauge it a little bit based off of how flat it is. One will be way up in the air and the other one won't. This is a super sharp uh, angled blade and wipe this thing off. It seems pretty, pretty even there. It's a little better. There, that one's low. That one's high. That one's high. So this one here is the low one. So we're just gonna have to do a visual. It's still a little low. It's really hard to get it perfect. That's a strong blade. I can't imagine this little aluminum base here coming down and causing that. I'll sit there and sometimes use my finger and gauge it there. Yeah, hi. <laughs> I'll sometimes use my finger and kind of gauge it to see if it's about the same height, which it's doggone close. And I rotate it. You can hear it click off and kick on. So it's opening and closing. Don't mean it's accurate, but they basically store stuff in here for their business and uh, they want it to be running right. Better plugged in. That fan's running. That one's running. Presser's going. I have a lot of extra room here. It's pretty stretched. Liquid line's not cold. Definitely ain't hot. All right, let's get our gauges on there. Well, that's probably why I didn't find any leaks. It's pulling down into a negative two. It is using 134A, 19 million ounces. So let's give this thing some nitrogen, then we'll pull the vacuum on it, recharge it, and we'll get them going. But I'm going to do a quick check here with the detectors and some nitrogen behind it. May not have been hardly anything in it, which doesn't help you a whole lot. Probably a small, hopefully, it's not a restriction. That really would suck. Okay, so it had about 50 pounds of pressure in it, which ain't a bunch. But usually it's enough. We're going to throw some nitrogen behind it, and then we'll listen for leak two. I did get the ultrasonic out when I was doing that, but it's really hard to get accurate uh, information when it's dripping water. The water can mislead you and make you believe that you have a leak that you don't have. I haven't checked inside yet, but I got down here to the old suction port. And she don't like that. And nothing there on medium. Come over to the insulation. Uh oh, it's an in insulation. See that? But we're not getting it there on that part. When you're on the higher sensitivity, just just go high instead of super. Yeah, if it's something in that uh, suction, so it peeled that off. We're not getting nothing on that, so. Must come down and over into this bend. And yeah, we're just gonna have to peel all that insulation off, take a good look at it, and see what's going on. It's probably 
cracked or sleeking through the sidewall somewhere in that suction line. Let's go ahead and check this thing in high here. Please don't go off. I really don't want to change an evaporator. With this being closed up like this, you would get something in here. And does not appear to be. So let's find out how bad that leak is. All right. Well, if we can get over to it to see it. Yeah. So that's right there in that. So we'll go ahead and we'll mark that, and then we'll repair it. It's right in the middle. They've got freaking drain lines, cap tubes, liquid line, which is sticking out the back side, so it can get smashed into a wall and broke. It's a lot of crap in the way. So let's see if we can bend some of this out of the way. And uh, we'll mark that with the knife so we can have scratch here to look at. And we'll just skim code that thing and we'll be good to go. Might as well as make good use of this. Get that other side there. That looks a lot better there. So, all right. So we put a little coating across the top there. Went left to right. Got it on there. Let's go ahead and pressurize this back up and recheck it. Um, you could always cut it out of there and get it back in, but I just have this bad feeling about messing with that more than I need to. We'll see how this does first. And if we have to, we could cut it out. If we do that, it's going to make it harder to pull the compressor out if you have to do anything to it. Yeah, that's going to make it a little rigid if you had to bend it. But you also got to look at the condition of this cooler. It's not in the greatest shape. It's definitely got some age on it. Can we get that insulated back up and get this thing evacuated? That filter dryer is a 3 8 It's a small one. They had a Jerry Rig a uh, port on that to even get what they've got, which kind of sucks because I really don't want to remove that. I don't think I, I don't know if I have any 3 8 or not. I was able to find a 3 8 one in there. It's a little smaller than this other one. It's a 53, and that one there is a 33, which in all reality, it should be able to handle it no problem. I think it's got tonnages here. 134A quarter horse. That's filtering. I mean, it's going to allow it through, but the filtering capacity is not going to be completely there, but at least it'll be some new instead of the old desiccant. The flow will still be able to flow through it, but just not as much desiccant. While well, we got the nitrogen set in here, we're going to make good use of it. I'm going to go ahead and bleed that out, and then we'll bleed as much as we can, and then we'll cut the, the pressure, and then we'll get her done in. All the oxygen will be displaced. That's about the only way you can do a cap tube. If you try pushing through a cap tube, it's not going to happen. It can be. I mean, you could try pushing it through the suction side and push it backwards that way, but it uh, this is going to work just fine. I got it burned in there, which it's almost impossible not to burn that paint a little bit. Got to pull it into the sockets, so we're good to go there. Got to pull a vacuum on it. We just pressurize it again. I'm going to spray it, make sure I don't have any leaks. And then uh, we're just going to get this thing vacuumed down. And recharge. One of the best things in the world to see is your suction starting to come up as you're adding through your liquid line. If you don't see that on a reach in, you've got capillary tube issues. Well, I just poked my head in there and I can hear the refrigerant coming through. You can probably hear it, possibly. I don't think you can hear it. I could hear it. Going for 19 ounces here. There's 17. Probably got to stall out just about there. It's about five o'clock. Took almost an hour to melt the ice off. And one pound, three ounces. Kill it. And that dryer's probably more along the lines of what this thing actually was originally. We uh, got the insulation back on there and on the 
compressor itself there too. Uh, did verify, blew through those lines, made sure that they were clean and clear. And so let's uh, see if our pressures are pretty much equalized and let's kick this thing on and see what it does. 76 and 69 looks close enough to me. Let's see what we get here. Hopefully it uh, runs. Let's see here. There it goes. All right. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna have problems because that would really suck. The downside of having a high-end cabinet, everything's aluminum on this thing, almost nothing's magnetic. So far, so good. Still need to dump the high side into it. That'll bring up the suction here. Right now we're kind of up there on the higher end of things. We'll let this run for a little while and see what we get. Right now we're under a heavy load. I can feel the evaporator getting cold there. Hopefully it's getting cold here. It's hard to tell. Yeah, it's starting to. It's slow, slow, slow. Oh, I got here. Suction's up there a little bit, but she's hot, so I'm gonna run for a bit. Uh, I would say it's probably 80 degrees out here in the garage, so 90, 100, 110, so 20, 30, we're about 20 degrees, 27 degrees higher than we probably should be on our head pressure. But we'll uh, see how she does. If I have to, I'll go grab the nitrogen. We'll blast that coil out directly right off the tank and get that thing blown out nice and clean. That right there is probably not the safest thing in the world. Definitely would never want to put a nozzle on the end of it. But you can get some real pressure through that. I uh, was able to blow all that garbage out. You can see that there's hardly any, anything left on that shield anymore. I know the head pressure had dropped to 205. Yeah. Yeah, it went from 220 something down to 205. Uh, suctions came down too with that, which is good. But yeah, it blew that crap out. Just a disclaimer: don't do that. That uh, that's unregulated, and it's potentially 2,500 to 2,800 pounds of pressure on that, and uh, you could take your eyeball out. So it. Uh, one of those unspokens. I never started doing that until about two years ago, and it's worked awesome because going through the regulators jack squat. But once again, do not do that. It's not safe. All right, guys, it just shut off. Awesome. And we are at 40, 44 degrees. This is measuring coil temperature, not uh, air temperature. I am going to set that one notch colder. I got it on number five right now, which is the normal setting for true. So we'll go one more notch and that should keep them under their 40 degree mark. I think they're mainly keeping just uh, non-perishables in here uh, like beverages. They uh, are ordering or having us order door seals so we'll get the new door seals on there. For the most part we needed to get in and get out. We've been here for a few hours getting everything up and going. That's why you really want to make sure that your coils are clean and stuff and that your evaporators are de-iced before you have the service guy come out and uh, we aren't paying them to melt ice but uh, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. If you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more like it, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our Facebook group at HVACR Survival. Till next time guys, we'll catch you on the next one.